more early stage companies. So what's Innovation Works do, doing about it? Well, our, our methodology is actually quite simple. Uh, when we started, we tried to pr provide immersive services to help entrepreneurs. Um, but while we no longer do that, uh, we are still following a very similar um, aspiration to basically uh, to be the most knowledgeable about the market, to provide the most help to early stage entrepreneurs. That's basically what we do. So we currently um, already, we manage about a billion dollars and uh, we're very well known in the market. Our approach is the following. First, we identify exponential trends. What are the trends that are really going to take off? So as an example, in 2009, we bet on Android, which was very um, um, uh, counter, basically counter um, market wisdom. Most people at the time thought uh, that um, um, there were Symbian and other platforms would take off. Um, but we, we made the um, uh, opposite bet, and it turns out that we were right, and all the investments did quite well. So what are the other Android opportunities? We currently bet a lot on digital content. I talked about that earlier with some examples. Um, and Miwei, Kechi is probably the, a, um, a great new example. You probably don't know this, but, but uh, you've probably seen Chipa Shuo. You guys see? Okay. So that's the Ma Dong's uh, show that's amazingly successful. And it's the best example that shows the web-based um, variety shows will take over from TV. So we've invested in Ma Dong to create the next 10 Chipa Shuo. So that's, the, that's an example. The trend that we're betting on is TV people will go to the internet space and use the web as a faster medium to get interesting content out there and make money from it. We also bet that advertising dollars will follow. We also bet that people who are post-95 will become the opinion leaders. And those of you in the audience will probably become followers because they're going to be looking at the newest, coolest, strangest things um, that, that will be, because they grew up, I, I think I used correct, I'm correct to use they, I don't think they're post 95s in this, in this room. Uh, post 95s, they grew up with the mobile internet. So they live more in the virtual world and they're augmented by the real world. Most of you, I think all of you probably still live in the real world, augmented by virtual world. When this flips, the entire idea of what kind of content, interactivity you want is completely changed. And we believe people who are born into the age of mobile internet will become the opinion leaders. And those of you who are in their 20s, 30s will become followers. Those of you in their 40s, 50s, like myself, won't get it anymore. <laughs> but that's, that's life. So that's how large the change we think is. So that's the trend we're betting on here. Uh, similarly, we're betting that um, uh, a lot of the culture content, uh, entertainment will change. Um, those of you who play game probably recognize Imba TV. That's another one of our investments. That's um, a video game con uh, gaming comment commentary. You're probably most of you are probably too old to know what SNH48 is. That, no, maybe not. <laughs> That's one of our investments. Uh, that appears to be an all-girl pop sh uh, group, but what it really is is a gigantic virtual game. Um, so it changes the monetization of entertainment from buying concert tickets to becoming a community and participate in the growth of the all-girl idols. So these are some of the things we study very deeply. Um, but we do some non-frivolous things too. Uh, we invest in online education. We certainly believe um, the education institutions will change as, as a result of the overall internet mobile revolution. Uh, we are betting on a number of uh, products uh, that uh, currently are more focused on specific learning that fits within the university or high school or uh, elementary school curriculum. Uh, we, we think challenging the education authority is, is too hard. That's probably left for the Americans to do. Um, we are going to accept uh, education the way it is and find ways to augment it. So perhaps getting a higher SAT score, perhaps getting into a higher score on your university examination. Uh, and these are some of the things we try to do. VIP Kid connects uh, top fun American teachers to Chinese kids uh, uh, under the age of 10 and make it fun. Because, you know, you'd like to have this fun American, you, we all know 
the American teachers are perhaps the most passionate and fun, especially if they're like in their 20s and, and still um, you know, able to sing and dance and tell jokes and all that. But they're not in China, or they're, not, they're still in the US. So this is an example where remote education by video makes sense. Uh, it can be engaging in the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh, Boxfish is another way that accepts the high school curriculum, but it basically rewrites the text uh, of learning using video-based fun content. But in the end, you learn the same vocabulary and you score higher. That's provably so based on students who learned through this. It, it allowed teachers to still maintain their role. Textbooks don't have to be changed. Exams are the same. But just that in the class teaching, the, the teachers using an iPad playing fun videos. And by the time you finish watching those videos, you've learned the vocabulary words, as opposed to uh, you know, having a list that you, you, you have to read one, one at a time. So these are some examples where we're trying to advance the state of, ed of education. <clears throat> we believe B2B, has, the age of B2B has finally come. A lot of people think of Alibaba.com as the B2B, but really, uh, we all know Alibaba.com was more of a Yellow Pages directory that helped Chinese merchants reach the world. B2B becomes powerful only when transactions can be conducted. And now, finally, the time has come for, conduct, for, for transactions to become possible. So, for example, you probably heard of Zhao Gangwang as an example. Not one of our investments, but helps you find, uh, basically, um, iron uh, within business to business. Mobase tries to find chemical compounds, uh, searching for something um, w that a factory can provide. Uh, Soya looks for fabric by taking pictures to find what fabric you could buy. It, it can make um, supplier and um, buyers and connect them together. And we believe these are some great examples of future B2B. Uh, we believe in shared economy. Uh, however, we really want to focus on parts of the shared economy uh, that, are, uh, that can be repeat usage and can be more standards based and can, and can be profitable per transaction or near profitable per transaction as opposed to just giving away money for people to use it and then they disappear. Uh, and also we believe in machine learning, uh, Internet of Things. Our general belief in this area is that uh, one, huge amounts of data are becoming available and providing huge value to potential institutions. Uh, we, we want to find the first set of those institutions that, that can take advantage of machine learning. And we think that one very clear set is in Internet finance. And if you look at banks, insurance companies, uh, or, um, invest, uh, or um, uh, securities companies, there's huge amounts of money being lost because it's not the right products are being sold and not the right content is being pushed to the right people. Um, and if you, act, if you could create a customer profile based on big data, you could much better estimate who are the people that's more likely to buy this private placement of a hedge fund. Um, if you could identify who are the possible buyers, your message will, will have a stronger uh, acceptance rate. And, and those numbers, but how do you estimate who has a, let's say, million dollar plus net worth? Um, because nobody keeps a million dollars in the bank account, they keep it everywhere. Well, that can actually be triangulated if you collect user statistics. Um, a lot of content is on the internet uh, which houses someone, how many houses a person owns is generally in some public registry. Where they live, how expensive are their houses, what kind of car they drive, are all content and also what websites they go to are all things that will give you an idea of what someone's net worth is. So two people may both have $10,000 in the bank. Uh, in one case, that might, be a, that might be someone with a net worth of $10 million, but the other case, maybe 10000 is all they have. So how can we tell the difference if you take all the banking transaction and then triangulate it with all the data that's out there? So that's an example of how big data can be used to create a lot of value. Uh, many other technologies, we believe, will, will become uh, very, very helpful. For example, uh, Face++ is a company we invested in that has the world's best face recognition. But of course, face recognition isn't just a securities thing. Um, it's, it can be generalized to visual recognition. It can be used uh, for in a, in a lot of uh, situations. Uh, you could um, uh, identify uh, uh, 
in, in, in uh, stores uh, where, where something might be stolen or who might have taken it. Uh, you'll be able to, um, um, if you are a, um, uh, let's say you're a grocery store, you could recognize who the customer is and what kind of upsell you should offer. And, 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 and um, uh, these kind of special customized messaging based on very strong face recognition or image recognition can be very valuable. And this type of company, the more data you have, the more powerful their recognition algorithm. So we want to find a few of these uh, uh, really advanced companies that can have state-of-the-art capabilities. Some of the other companies we've uh, funded, uh, Xiaoyu Zaijia is a home robot uh, that primarily connects you to someone else and primarily connects you to your uh, elderly parents uh, who is uh, probably not sophisticated enough to use FaceTime or WeChat um, at the home. It's a video conferencing device and it sells for about 2,000 RMB and or connects you to say your baby and you're able to watch the baby and the babysitter while you're away. Uh, Xiaonyu is a uh, smart electrical scooter uh, that is about 3,000 RMB and um, it's very popular. In, the, in one day, in the last Shuang uh, Shi, uh, they sold about 20,000 units. Uh, uh, D-Nurse is a test for blood sugar and it automatically sends it online for your doctors to see. And, and one of the other companies, The One, is a piano that teaches you how to play without without necessarily having a piano teacher. So it's about uh, 3,000 RMB, and it's a piano that has an iPad and, and a lot of lights attached to the keyboard, so you can turn learning piano into something that's fun. It could also have a teacher version, where one teacher can teach, teach seven kids uh, with eight pianos in one room. Uh, but you can use a headset, because it's all electronic. So no longer do you need to have any musical scores. Everything is on, on an iPad and you just play along and it's a game of a competition. You can play with your friends. It completely changes the way people play pianos and this is now the number one selling musical instrument um, in China. So these are some of the trends that, that we believe in. Uh, one last thing about IoT, uh, we are strong believers in the Internet of Things but we also believe it's not quite ready uh, for prime time. Uh, we think the the road to standardization is very long. We think all the hardware companies are very selfish. They want to build their own ecosystem. They don't care about end users. So it will take a while until we as consumers um, revolt and refuse to use them. They'll finally build some standards and then our lives will be enhanced after that. So in the meantime, we would much rather invest in smart hardware that as a single purpose product, whether it's a smart piano or a smart home robot or a blood sugar tester that does one thing and it does really well, it does better than traditional things. It's something that doesn't require education in the marketplace. You can you buy it, use it, it adds value, it's a good value. Um, that's the kind of hardware that will take off. Uh, something that claims to be, well, when we sell two million of these and they're all fully connected, then magic will happen. We don't invest in those. Uh, we also don't invest in those companies as well. We're going to keep selling this as a loss, but by the time we have a few million units installed, all the big data is worth so much. We don't like those. We are very practical. It's kind of back to the basics of betting on the hardware that actually adds value as opposed to creating hype. So these are the things that we believe in. Uh, internet going to the, um, content going to the internet, uh, entertainment, connecting uh, post-95 young people, online education, delivering value to real, uh, real students and users in real classrooms, uh, B2B, where there's transactions to be had, shared economy that uh, actually, add, actually create value for users um, and that bring user back on a frequent basis, and machine learning and other types of uh, technology companies, uh, and also IoT, but starting with smart hardware. So these are some of the things we believe in. So once we identify the areas we believe in, we then try to find really great uh, founders and we try to, to fund them. As much as we want to help young founders, and we do help young founders, we're finding that as internet becomes more mature and starts to intersect with traditional industries, probably the, the best founders are those who have some experience. Uh, for example, uh, Ma Dong, he's been the producer of the um, uh, CCTV Chunwan. 
So with that kind of experience and now understanding the internet, we think he's poised to, to uh, create um, um, disruptive uh, content that combines internet and the traditional content. Um, Hu Fei was one of the founders of, um, of Taobao. Um, Chen Feng was, uh, was a serial entrepreneur, came from Microsoft. Um, uh, Tang, Tang Xiang was um, uh, from the decoration industry, from the painting and decoration industry. Now he's trying to disrupt that. And Wang Zijie is, uh, was the CEO of a gaming company, and uh, a multi-hundred million dollar gaming company, and now he's actually running SNH48. So with that kind of a CEO, we have assurance that they both understand the internet and also the traditional. So we see that the average age of the amazing companies, the average age of the amazing founders probably going up. Is there still room for the 20 something founder? Definitely, but probably stay in an area that's more like um, uh, gaming um, um, and uh, things that relate to where your youth becomes an, is an advantage, not a lack of experience. Uh, and then we uh, try to become the, an important part of the ecosystem. Uh, we no longer believe we're at the Silicon Valley in a bottle. We work with the entire ecosystem. We try to build good relationship with angels. Uh, we, we no longer try to invest as the first investor. We try to be the first institutional investor. So these angels can be all our friends. You know, they make a you know, uh, $300,000 investment in a, in a company, and the company grows um, to be three times more valuable, and we, we invest in the next round. So that's, that helps make a win-win situation. Uh, we have an entrepreneur in residence program where if you want to start the company, uh, we could, you could potentially just sit with us, work with us, draw a salary until one day you want to start the company, uh, then, then you can either take our money or someone else's. We're actually very flexible and believe in the, in the, in the freedom of, of choice. We work with deal sourcers and we also try to train a lot of young CEOs, that some of whom are not uh, companies we invested in. As an example, we founded the Young CEO Club with uh, Xu Xiaoping and Cai Wensheng. That's the three of us. Uh, and we, all three of us, plus our staffs, plus the companies we funded, in turn, train 40 students every six months. And these students are not guaranteed an investment from us, but we will give everything we can and help them grow. And then at the end of the session, if we, we can make some investments, which we have and, 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 and Wensheng and Xiaoping also have. So we believe this will end up being a win-win for all. And we're trying to become more open source than before to try to re really reach out. And in case you want to listen to some of these courses, uh, we actually made, uh, I think, 13 of them available online. If you go to my uh, Weibo or Weixin uh, you will see, uh, you will see the, the content, not, not an advertising. <laughs> uh, it's all <laughs> open source, free uh, training courses by top people that you can uh, listen to. The next advantage once we find great entrepreneurs and fund them is we, we have um, what we think is a playbook for the, for the Chinese internet. We believe um, you can look at the Chinese market and look for unique opportunities by trying things out. So you identify a big trend and then you try to build small things and iterate. That's what the Lean Startup is all about. Once you find something that sticks, an idea that might work, then you try, we have a model that helps you to build up momentum and then um, find the right lever to, to, to create an eruption in the marketplace and then maintain, maintain the strength. We see that the modern day companies often have this exponential step and we, we specialize in helping each industry, each entrepreneur find this and find the, the lever. And this lever cannot be uh, purely funded by money because if you want to grow that fast, that soon, no VC will give you this much money. So very often it requires finding a lever that is very cost effective, perhaps even free. Uh, as an example, Xiaomi in their early years, early days, um, basically used Weibo as their free promotional vehicle. And, and they, re they managed their first big growth without spending any money. And that's the kind of lever that we, we would help companies to look for. Um, and then once you create one step, then you look for the next one and the next one, and we continue to help expansion of these user communities. And once you're big enough, we help you create a moat to around your ecosystem. 
So these are the steps that uh, we've been there, done that, seen many, many industries. And when someone takes our investment, we help them go through that. Um, here's an example of a company called uh, Yao Chufa. Uh, in, in, when you build up your company, it's very important not to think too broad. So Yao Chufa is a travel, e-travel company, but they didn't think of themselves as wanting to become the number five or number six of the e-travel companies. We rather they look for a very specific niche and become number one. And that builds you the strength and then the foundation to go to the next step. So Yao Chufa picked a very special area uh, five years ago. It was the weekend flash deal travel agency. It's a very specific industry, but it's very much helped by the fact more people own cars. When you own, this is an American tradition, right? Many Americans take the weekend off, drive somewhere, especially uh, Labor Day and so on. Uh, the same thing uh, we thought at the time could and should happen in China. So as more people own cars, they no longer have to fly to a very distant place and take a week for their vacation. They could drive by and stay for two, three hours, and then stay in a great boutique hotel for one or two days, then go home. And no one was ready to lead that, so we helped them to become the number one in this space. And the way you grow the business is you basically find a way for that to happen within one market, in their case, Guangzhou. And then they went to Hangzhou and so on. And then they repeated the process after that. Um, it was important that they never think of themselves as challenging sea trip or Chinar because they're way, way, way too small. So we really helped them becoming number one in that space, not number five in the overall big space. Um, and another advantage that we have is we try to provide a lot of service. Once we invest in a company, uh, we're not done. We really want to help them with everything they need. Uh, re recruiting a team, uh, building a prototype, under, um, and then um, testing and iterating the product and marketing it. And when they're ready, go raise the next round of funding. We also help them help work with each other and help each other. Um, for example, uh, Baozhou was an example that has a lot of great content and IP. Zhan Cheng was a company that was very good at developing games. So we have them develop a game using the Baozhou characters. So those are the examples we, we help them. We often we organize monthly workshops. And also we have a founders boot camp where we have very specific goals to help the entrepreneurs. The goals are very, very simple. Uh, the founders boot camp is where we take the companies we fund in the past six months, put them, put them all in one room, and said, OK, you just got your Series A funding from un Innovation Works, we're going to help you get to Series B. And then we would have intensive sessions that help them. Um, and, and, and we would bring in Series B investors to help them pitch, and we help them uh, get the funding. Um, but also, we help them become friends. Uh, there are off-sites that we would have. There's an election to be a class president. People donate things, uh, and then they get auctioned off. So actually, um, this is where people go wild a little bit. They actually raise 5 million RMB for their class fund. Uh, one of the things, for example, I donated 50 of my books. So I thought that was worth, you know, maybe 1,000 um, uh, or But actually, that went for 8,000. So I said, that's great. He says, no, Kaifu, we have a demand. For each of the 50 books, we're going to tell you what to write on them. And <laughs> you have to write it. So uh, I have yet to know what they want to write. Hopefully nothing too, too terrible. But these are very clever people who are donating resources and getting an auction off and using the money. For example, how are they spending the 5 million RMB they, they raised? Uh, I'm taking them to Silicon Valley in January. And we'll get to visit some of the top companies there and meet with great people to help them further grow. So we feel that today with uh, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent being so powerful, it's important that we create a new kind of brotherhood and camaraderie so these people help each other because otherwise they're lonely fighting these giants and that can be very, very difficult. And of course, in the case of, uh, in addition to the Founders Boot Camp, we help them get the next round funding. And when we try to help them get funding, it's not just about when are you out of cash, let's raise some money five months before that. It's really about what are the milestones you must reach in order for the next round VCs to listen to you. It's also about market driven. For some companies, you see a competitor getting, getting bought at a certain valuation, and you can use that to justify a higher multiple. Uh, and you should raise money and get it before, before the news becomes uh, a history.
So in the last 12 months, we helped the companies we invest in raise over $600 million. And, and that's been tremendous for them, for their war chest, because as the overall industry hits a winter, uh, these, these companies that we invest in have a good war chest. So how much are the portfolio we, we invest in worth? Well, there are some companies over 30, 100, 300, or $2 billion. Uh, probably the most valuable company we invested in is Meitu, that <laughs> probably many of you use. Um, and it's worth actually more than that, but this is the last round valuation. And in terms of the other companies, Moji Tianqi, Qingting FM, Yao Chufa, Wan Jia, Zhihu are some of the companies that you probably um, also use. And also a lot of companies uh, under 100. I won't enumerate these, but you can see that every year we try to help our company get, get to the next level. So in uh, 2014, uh, we had this many companies at these tiers, and then in 2015, uh, the number went up significantly. So that's the job that we continue to try to do. And, and also, we're a venture capitalist with both uh, U.S. and also RMB because RMB and U.S. are not freely exchanged, and there are some rules in Internet companies that you cannot uh, go public if, if you, cannot be, you cannot get an internet content license, ICP license, unless you're a purely local company or a company that has a VIE structure. So anyway, it's very complex rules. That means an entrepreneur needs to decide if they want a US dollars and go public in the US or let me be and go public locally. And basically we think it's all about in the US, the analysts are more sophisticated and more suitable for kind of winner take all kind of big market disruptive opportunities. RMB is more focused on if you make money in the next few years, and how much profit and how much uh, PE ratio, more sort of the traditional look. So the companies that come in, we have both uh, currency alternatives for them. So in terms of how much value we, uh, we can create, uh, so the, these are the types of multiples that we create for our, for our um, uh, people who invest in innovation works. If they invested five years ago, they made six times the money. They invested maybe three years, two, three years ago, they made about three times. They invested la last year, they make about 1.8 times. And this is all net of all of our fees. So this is uh, quite attractive to people. Um, and we're creating value, not just to the entrepreneurs, but also returning uh, good, um, good um, um, multiples for people who invest in us. Uh, of course, for us to be successful, we have to be smart in managing our money. So actually, uh, this is how much money we deploy per quarter, but for example, uh, about, uh, uh, about four quarters ago, we actually slowed down our investment pace because we saw the market was too high, and we thought this was the time to help our companies raise more money than to, than, and, and less so for us to invest in more companies. So this type of discipline is...